All right, guys. So before I even turn this mama on with magnetrons, I want to do a series of tests to make sure that we're good. So the first and probably the most important test to pass is the water bubbler test. And basically, this is just where I push in compressed air, and it's going to go through this whole system. And there's a water bubbler here. Now, the water bubbler actually requires quite a bit of pressure for air to go through. So it's going to leak anywhere else it can leak, right? before it will go through this water bubbler. So this will let me know if there's a leak anywhere else. If I turn on this air and it doesn't start coming through here. So let's go ahead and turn this air on. And look at that. It's going through. So this is a great representation of a, probably about the same amount of pressure this thing will be under at any given time with the pyrolysis gas. So this also lets me know that when I do go to purge it with the argon or nitrogen, it's actually going to go through the whole system and not just leak out like we had before. Because this is really going through. You can hear it. So that's a great test. That's actually my favorite test to do. Um, and you see I have a pressure release valve here. Let's give this a little test. You hear that? It was going through there. So another thing to do obviously is I have a pressure gauge. Close this valve and see if there's any leaks can it build hold pressure can it build pressure I'm not doing that quite yet because I put just put this silicone on about 12 hours ago and I want to make sure that it's really set and good before I do any of that stuff you know um, but so far everything's looking good even the shaft is not leaking because I have this little it's literally just a rubber seal who would have known it would be so simple um, you put some oil between this so it's not as much friction and yeah literally so so far this thing's looking really good I'm pushing out more of the oxygen because I'm kind of scared, I won't lie. Because I know if this thing does blow up, I'm dead. <laughs> I'm kind of scared, I ain't gonna lie. It's on. We got the shaft leaking back here. I need to put some oil on it. All right, we got the seal on there. Let's try again. We got a leak up here. I didn't put the gasket on properly, clearly. This is literally the weakest that this machine will ever be. The weakest. And yet it still is so powerful. It's kind of scary to know that it could be upped by five times plus agitation from this. Because the amount of vapor is, all, is crazy. I mean, like, I don't know if you can see it, but this is leaking from these pipes alone. Or especially this one. What the hell? <laughs> so there was some type of pressure explosion. And I'm not sure from what. I know these pipes aren't the biggest. I think what's happening if I open up this chamber right now, there's an absolute crazy amount of vapor in there. The microwaves start to heat up the vapor. The vapor becomes very hot, starts to expand even more, and it can't all get through this water bubbler. It creates a ton of pressure in there. As we can see, in terms of damage, this was damaged. All of the mica sheets are, are um, like poking out. They're bulging. But other than that, there's no damage to the chamber, no damage to the pipes. Um, the pressure release valve did not open. So it wasn't an obscene amount of pressure. I don't even really know what happened. I'm just glad I was recording it this time around. Um, I have something else for these that could work because we see the mica, despite it, you know, holding up, it, it, it pretty much, you know, crumbles and falls apart the minute any type of pressure hits it. So I have another alternative. For this mica here but um 
I'm just trying to figure out what causes these pressure spikes because we didn't even agitate this, right? So that's not good. We gotta figure this out. Because if we're not even agitating it and it's doing this pressure stuff, imagine what it is with only one magnetron as well. And how dangerous will it get when we start to really up the power while agitating it, you know? Like, I mean, you can already look in there and see there's a lot of vapor. Now, if this is simply an explosion of, like, oxygen, then that's more manageable to me. But an explosion of, of vapor and pressure is kind of hard because it's like, well, how much lower can you go? And it's things like this that make me kind of question the water bubbler. It's not allowing enough vapor to pass through. That's just the truth. It's not allowing enough because in order for vapor to get through this water bubbler, there needs to be a certain buildup of pressure all around this whole chamber, right? And if the pressure in this chamber exceeds how quickly it can come out, you know, that type of thing is going to happen. Now, it doesn't have to always be a bad thing. If we have everything sealed really tight, a simple explosion inside or pressure buildup inside actually may benefit the reaction. But it still is dangerous at the same time if, if things are, you know, going crazy. So in hindsight, I didn't mention this later, but basically the reason why the pressure explosion happened was it was just a vapor explosion and it was because I had a ton of leaks all over the place and I used the mica as waveguide covers and basically as soon as it crumbled, it just shot out a ton of pressure. So even in the video, it looks like the water bubbler exploded. It really was just the sound of all the pressure leaving that mica sheet at one time. So once I solved that issue, this never happened again. So after taking this waveguide off, as we can see, the mica is popped. I don't think it was an explosion at all. I don't think it was a burst of pressure at all. I think that this, all of this just built up to a pressure that the mica couldn't handle. And then it popped and it just released that vapor, which released the sound. It made it sound more violent. It wasn't violent at all. Nothing shot anywhere. Nothing did anything. But these just popped. So I don't think that our issue is a matter of oh it's too much pressure i think our issue is some of these materials aren't rated for pressure so i'm going to replace this mica with the last option i had that could possibly do this i feel like goddamn thomas edison up in here experimenting with different filaments for the light bulb like just trying hundreds and thousands of different materials until i find the one that works but when i find the one that works it's gonna do it you know all right we're gonna run this thing for real now i got everything sealed up right we're gonna pump this argon in and I got I got shoes, I got gloves, I got a, a face shield, I got a jacket, I got gloves, you know what I'm saying? I got um earmuffs. No, I'm 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 ready, I'm strapped and ready. If, if she wanna blow, I'm just saying. I also got this right here in here, and this is a, a thermocouple, which goes to this, and this will let us know the internal temperature. So right now it's at 83. We can, we'll never really know the direct temperature of the plastic itself unless we had an infrared pyrometer which are really expensive so I don't have one of those but we can at least know the vapor temperature. We have pressure pressure valve, pressure release valve, view window. This is just a flash that I have up there right now you can somewhat see in there. Um, this is the argon input, output, um, shaft, sealed. We're going to pump some argon in, get the water bubbler going, get all the oxygen out, and then turn the microwaves on. Just one magnetron, no agitation. So we got the argon coming through. You can slightly hear it coming through the water bubbler. That means that we have this thing nice and sealed. Um, let me just close this valve for a second. So we can build up some pressure to get all the air out. All of it. I want all the air out. Alright, so I, I'd say that's pretty good now. Got my microwave meter. Got my shoes on. Gloves, jacket, face shield. Let's go. Microwave is on. It's been running for about 
three minutes. I'm so scared, honestly. But we do have vapor coming out the water bubble. It's not very visible, but it's there. Internal temperature is at 92 right now. You can't really see the thermal couple. We have no leaks. I'm just going to let this thing run and I'm going to stand back. This is really just a test run to see if it can hold up. You can see the vapor coming out of there though at quite a high pressure rate. Which is a good thing. The high pressure of the vapor is a good thing in terms of the reaction and in terms of going through the filters. But it's scary as hell to me to know what's under that much pressure. So I'm going to leave y'all right here. I'm going to be, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm going to back up. Y'all stay here. Internal vapor temperature reached 110 Fahrenheit or 43.5 centigrade. And I got all my safety gear on. I want to open up this pressure release valve for a second to just see, you know, um, what's up with this vapor. You know, is it going to shoot out or what? Like, Nope, not much. Because once you turn the once you turn the magnetrons off on a microwave pyrolysis reactor, the reaction really pretty much stops immediately. Like of course there's the residual vapors, but it's not under pressure anymore. It's nothing crazy anymore. So, um, yeah. All right, I got two magnetrons in there, but before I turn both on at once, I want to do an agitation test. So we're gonna turn the first micro magnetron on and only the first one, and then we're gonna rotate the blades now. I'm not going to rotate the blades up close because as you guys remember, every time I rotate the blades in the past, that's when it exploded. So I have this cord that literally goes back and 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 back. And back. Pretty much really safe, right? Because I'm so far away now. And I can just tug on it. Well, it needs to be higher up. Yeah, and you see that? Boom. Blades will rotate one, well, like a quarter of a rotation, but that will be enough for any trapped vapor to all release itself. So we'll see if this thing can hold up to the pressure. If it can't, I'm gonna be far away. If it can, then we are one step closer to this, the dream. So I am scared, but at least I can be far away. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this on.